everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about the way I rate my books, like my book rating system. And I really, really love watching these kind of videos because I always want to know exactly how people rate their books because I feel like everyone does it a little bit differently and there's no like one like set way to do your rating system. So I think that's super interesting. <laughs> And yeah, I feel like I kind of do mine a little differently than what I've seen a lot of other people explain theirs as, so I figured I would explain how I do mine. So what I've noticed from a lot of the other videos that I've seen of people like explaining their rating system is that a lot of people base theirs off of enjoyment, and I kind of do that as well, but it's kind of half and half, or at least like maybe 75-25% of like enjoyment and then also critical. So it's kind of like a mix between both of those. I thought that I kind of just did mine on enjoyment, but then I watched other people's videos and I'm like, okay, I don't do that. So it's definitely sort of a mix. And so I figure that just to start this off, it would make sense to go through what I categorize as like five, four, three, two, one stars and just kind of explain all of that. So starting off with five stars, that's like the top tier book. That is a book that like emotionally spoke to me and that is just a part of my soul now. <laughs> and those are really, really special books. Like I loved it. I thought it was really well written. I, you know, all these things that it didn't feel too problematic to me because you know, everything's problematic. So everything's gonna have that kind of element into it. So it really just depends on how problematic it is. But yeah, I mean, a lot of it is enjoyment, but there's also that aspect of like, it has to be well written. The characters are, you know, have to be well done. There has to be like a really good plot. There has to be, you know, these sort of things that I look for in books and in writing. And I do feel like I kind of am a little critical because I can kind of just like really rate something low on like one little critical thing. So it has to, you know, fit all these standards of like, well written, character development, plot development, stuff like that. If there's like too many plot holes, then it's not gonna be five stars. So with the four star book, I have like kind of the same level of enjoyment for the most part as a five star, but there are critical elements of it that I really don't like. Like maybe it's too problematic or the problematic elements aren't done very well, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And then with the three star book, that's kind of where I'm split half and half. Like I did kind of enjoy it. I was able to finish it but there were a lot of issues that I had with it. And so I have a lot of three star books that sometimes do get bumped up to a four star because I've decided to, you know, maybe do three and a half and I'm feeling nice that day. I talk about that a lot in my reviews. So I think that's a good reason to actually read my reviews and not just look at the rating. And then with two star books, those are books that I just really didn't like and that I didn't like either critically or enjoyment wise and I'm just like not really into it at all. Usually with two star books, those are ones that I personally hated, but I could see how other people like them and they're probably usually like really popular books that I really didn't like. So I think that's kind of how I sort of rationalize my two star rating. And then for one star ratings, I really don't ever give those out. I think I've maybe given them out to maybe one book but those are books that I absolutely hated and I cannot imagine how anyone could possibly like them. Like those are just books that like are slow, boring, not well written. I couldn't get through them. I hated everything about it, the characters, the plot, everything. And I can't imagine how anyone else would like them. So that's just kind of like how I go from like five to four to three to two to one. And I also do half star ratings like I mentioned earlier. So a lot of them can be like three and a half stars or four and a half stars. And sometimes I'll bump them up on Goodreads to maybe five or four. But then there are other times when I just keep it at a three because I do feel like it deserved a three and a half, but I'm not sure that I can like in good conscience put it at like a four. So for me, when I'm rating a book, I usually kind of compare it to certain five star books that I've already read and that I already know have like blown my mind, have like you know, checked off every single thing on my list. And one of those books is absolutely Six of Crows. Like every time I really, really enjoy a book, I think to myself, did I enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed Six of Crows? Like, is it well written? Are the characters really well developed? Are there really great plot points? Or like, is the plot, you know, interesting or well created? You know, there are a lot of different elements of this book that I really, really enjoy. And I find very, 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 very few faults in this book. It's just one of my all-time favorite books, and I compare every single book 
to this one. So if it lives up to this one, if it becomes one of my favorites, like And I Darken or The Crown's Game or Stalking Jack the Ripper, things like that, they become, you know, they go into my five star uh, club. And so if they don't really match up to this one, but I still love it, like I think Caraval, I rated four stars, but it's not like at this level exactly it becomes, you know, into my four stars. So really, you know, the top tier book is going to be a five star book. Four stars is also a really, really good rating for me. Usually with four star books, there's, you know, things that I'm just not really into in the book, or there are points where maybe the plot is too slow, or there are characters I don't like, but overall, I really, really enjoyed it. And sometimes for four star books, I actually enjoy them as much as a five star book. There are just elements that I just can't jive with. So when it comes to three star books, those are actually a lot harder for me to rate than five or four star books. Like as an example, Iron Cast by Destiny Soraya is a book that I rated three stars. I really, really didn't enjoy this book when I was reading it. It was well written and I think that there are a lot of really redeeming qualities about this book, but it was really, really hard for me to get through. Like I kept feeling like there was something missing. There were like things that I wish had happened that didn't happen. And so it ended up being a three star read. And the only reason it wasn't a two star read for me is because I was able to finish it and that the ending was very strong. So for me, you know, if it has like a few redeeming qualities in like the entire mess of like unredeeming qualities, then it's going to be a three star book. But also on the flip side, I rated Shadow and Bone three and a half stars. So that's a little bit different than a three star, like a solid three star. If I rate something three and a half stars, it's usually because I want to give it four stars, but there are things that are keeping me from doing so. So with like a real three star read, like uh, Iron Cast, that one is one that I never really even intended on rating at four stars. So it's definitely a solid three and it could have been a two, but it ended up being a three. <laughs> But with Shadow and Bone, I gave this three and a half stars because it wasn't very well written, at least in the way that I expect Lee Bardugo to write in. And it was just a little too simplified for my taste. And I think that's just because it's, you know, her debut book. It, you know, I, it wasn't at Six of Crows level for me. So I gave it that half star just because I really enjoyed the characters. And there were a lot of different things I loved about it, like the world building and all that kind of stuff. It was just too simplified. So it couldn't be at a four star. So I had to bump it down to three and a half. It's still four stars on Goodreads for me because, you know, when I do a half star, it really depends on am I going to give it a four star rating or a three star rating or whatever it is. So like, for example, when I give this book three and a half stars as my actual rating, but then on Goodreads it says four stars, it's because I was usually feeling nice that day <laughs> or I just really like, you know, you really have to decide, are you going to do four stars or three stars? And I feel like that's kind of the annoying thing about half stars. But for me, half stars are really, really important. And I did mention this earlier, but reading my reviews is like the majority of where my opinions on the book are. Like, I feel like looking at the rating is one thing, and I usually rate a lot of books pretty high, but getting into like the nitty gritty of like how I feel about a book is usually in the reviews. And I've gotten a lot better at writing reviews since I started last year, because last year I started mostly because I wanted to do booktube, and I wanted to read 50 books in a year, and I did that. And so I wanted to be able to look back on the books and kind of be like, okay, what did I like? What did I dislike? You know, what are things that I need to look out for in the future? And so a lot of my reviews are fairly detailed and I talk about trigger warnings, content warnings, anything that I find problematic, anything that I feel like was badly written or whatever, or things that I really, really enjoyed. So if you want to know exactly what I think about a book, you have to read my reviews. And I also do Goodreads updates on my books. So sometimes books will have like 18 updates and those are actually like really helpful with finding out what I think about a book. So while I think rating systems are really, really like important, I feel like for a lot of people, they can kind of be not so important because it's kind of hard to see how someone's going to rate a book and like use that to judge their enjoyment of it because people rate their books so differently. So it's just hard to kind of, you know, gauge like what's a good book and what's a bad book. So I feel like when there are reviews, you should read them at least, you know, 
until a certain point. I think, you know, for me, if I haven't read a book yet and I want to know what someone thought of it, I usually read the first paragraph of the review because usually that's pretty non-spoilery. For my reviews, they're like majority non-spoilery. If they do have spoilers, I let you guys know so you don't have to read it. But I just, you know, I felt like this was an important video to make because sometimes people just look at the ratings and then judge from there, which is fine. But I just wanted to let you guys know exactly how I rate my books and, you know, how you should be considering them when you're wanting to read a new book. All right, so I hope that that was a really helpful video. These videos are actually really helpful for me, so I hope that they are helpful for you. And if you enjoyed it, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.